us? They swore that they wouldn't. In recounting the story, Musk pauses and stares vacantly for a very long time. Then they damn well shot the dog dead. His most searing experiences came at school. For a long time, he was the youngest and smallest student in his class. He had trouble picking up social cues. Empathy did not come naturally, and he had neither the desire nor the instinct to be ingratiating. As a result, he was regularly picked on by bullies who would come up and punch him in the face. If you have never been punched in the nose, you have no idea how it affects you the rest of your life, he says. At assembly one morning, a student who was horsing around with a gang of friends bumped into him. Elon pushed him back. Words were exchanged. The boy and his friends hunted Elon down at recess and found him eating a sandwich. They came up from behind, kicked him in the head, and pushed him down a set of concrete steps. They sat on him and just kept beating the shit out of him and kicking him in the head, says Kimball, who had been sitting with him. When they got finished, I couldn't even recognize his face. It was such a swollen ball of flesh that you could barely see his eyes. He was then taken to the hospital and was out of school for a week. Decades later, he was still getting corrective surgery to try to fix the tissues inside his nose. But those scars were minor compared to the emotional ones inflicted by his father, Errol Musk, an engineer, rogue, and charismatic fantasist who to this day bedevils Elon. After the school fight, Errol sided with the kid who pummeled Elon's face. The boy had just lost his father to suicide, and Elon had called him stupid, Errol says. Elon had this tendency to call people stupid. How could I possibly blame that child? When Elon finally came home from the hospital, his father berated him. I had to stand for an hour as he yelled at me and called me an idiot and told me that I was just worthless, Elon recalls. Kimball, who had to watch the tirade, says it was the worst memory of his life. My father just lost it, went ballistic, as he often did. He had zero compassion. Both Elon and Kimball who no longer speak to their father, say his claim that Elon provoked the attack is unhinged and that the perpetrator ended up being sent to juvenile prison for it. They say their father is a volatile fabulist, regularly spinning tales that are larded with fantasies, sometimes calculated and at other times delusional. He has a Jekyll and Hyde nature, they say. One minute, he would be friendly. The next, he would launch into an hour or more of unrelenting abuse. He would end every tirade by telling Elon how pathetic he was. Elon would just have to stand there, not allowed to leave. It was mental torture, Elon says, pausing for a long time and choking up slightly. He sure knew how to make anything terrible. When I call Errol, he talks to me for almost three hours and then follows up regularly with calls and texts over the next two years. He is eager to describe and send me photos of the nice things he provided to his kids, at least during the periods when his engineering business was doing well. At one point, he drove a Rolls Royce, built a wilderness lodge with his boys, and got raw emeralds from a mine owner in Zambia until that business collapsed. But he admits that he encouraged a physical and emotional toughness. Their experiences with me would have made Vell School quite tame, he says, adding that violence was simply part of the learning experience in South Africa. Two held you down while another pummeled your face.